All right. Well, uh, moving on for the uh, to the uh, reading series for today's episode. You know, over over the holiday break, uh, there was uh, uh, an- another. A lot of people were messaging me about this. You know, I've had to wait some time to cover this, but it's been another 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 stunning revelation in the life and times of one Mister Rod Dreher. Oh boy. Uh, this this current revelation was about as surprising as finding out that Rod thinks that um, sexual attraction to men is ba- the baseline setting for uh, the male of the species, <laughs> and that um, having to, like being sexually attracted to women is something essentially something that needs to be trained and learned into people through cultural programming. Uh, th- this current revelation about as surprising as that one. Uh, Rod's father was in the KKK. No way. I mean, what? I, honestly, like. That is like the least interesting thing about all this because it's a long post and Rod is once again very much in his feelings. But you know, uh, for the, to, his, for, to a certain degree, it makes me feel bad for not for the man Rod is today, but for the person like the, the kid he once was. Like it actually like I, I feel some modicum of sympathy for Rod in the past. I mean, not Rod now, who I think is pretty much irredeemable, but. It just it, like the, the piece really makes it clear that like like the, his asshole dad and family <laughs> ruined his marriage and life because they just couldn't accept how fruity he was and he they yeah. were just mean they were just mean to him his entire life despite how how desperately he wanted their approval yeah it's a, it's like one of those classic deals where all of the 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 white blood cells just go crazy like they had this kid and they're like he's not one of us if he'd been in the wild he would have been eaten by his mother yeah. like that this like oh this one didn't come out right you know and that happens and you know we're all if that happens to you you have to come to terms with it somehow most people do it by you know saying like uh sorry parents like i have my own worth but but rod took a different path <laughs> um a very different path uh one could say that he took the ideology of his forefathers his the literal forefathers and you know made it a little fruity <laughs> got a little, got a little nice oh. with it. Yeah. What if we were taking that burning cross and cooking bouillabaisse over it? <laughs> <laughs> and like you know, a, a, a lot of a lot of the a lot of the piece is Rod, of course, stridently condemning uh, the, the the Ku Klux Klan. Good, good on him for that. Let's give him a round of applause. That's brave. And, you know, yeah, well of, done, uh, sir. Um, you know, like uh, dec- you know, just sort of condemning um, the, a culture of like Southern racism and bigotry. That's all well and good, but that's not before. <laughs> That all comes before he suggests that his father's racism and membership in the Ku Klux Klan could have something to do with being demonically possessed by Freemasons. So it's <laughs> Rod is what, what, Rod is. I'll get to uh, it. I'll get. To, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, just, just, just a few a few highlights from uh, Rod's uh, "A Darkness Revealed" column. Uh, uh, this is his magnum opus in uh, the American Conservative, of course. So he writes. In 2002, when I was living in New York, my wife prevailed upon me to go see a Catholic therapist to deal with the anger over 9-11 that was eating me alive from within. <laughs> Great. I mean, just already. Yeah. Just, just so My wife prevailed Catholic upon me therapist. to see a Catholic therapist to deal with the anger I had about 9-11. How did you find a Catholic therapist in 2001? Oh, it's got to be like gotta be shit. my dad wrote a whole novel about a Catholic therapist. So there you go. He's going to oh, see okay. doc- Dr. Morales, <laughs> star of the treatment, the novel and short stories. Um, no, he says here uh, in the first meeting with the therapist, he told me that he was going to get me to see the awful truth that under the right circumstances, I could have been piloting one of the planes that struck the Twin Towers. <laughs> okay, that amazing is a good therapist. therapist. That is a amazing great therapist, therapist. Because, I, like I said, like, he probably, Rod probably walked in and was, did not even get to articulate the phrase, I'm dealing with anger issues over 9-11, before the therapist was just like, this guy could easily be one of the 9-11 plotters. <laughs> yeah, he pro- like, probably <laughs> said like two words. This absolutely incinerate an office building full of people because of some obscure religious uh, trauma <laughs> or pathology. <laughs> Under the right circumstances, I could have been piloting one of the planes that struck the Twin Towers. No way, I thought. This made me so angry. Yeah, so angry he was probably thinking about blowing up his therapist's office and cutting his head off or something. <laughs> I clashed with him on other issues and ended the therapy early. No way! <laughs> I really want to know the other issues he clashed with on his therapist other than you could have done 9-11. <laughs> I just can't believe that Rod did take well to therapy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, who would have guessed? Therapist. Yeah. 
You well, try as hard as you can, but you know, <clears throat> just not for some people. It's just not the right thing. Uh, and then he goes, but I still was mad at him for daring to say that I might in any way have done such an evil deed. Okay, well, we'll leave that there for now. Okay. Uh, jumping around, he says, uh, moving, up, moving along in the article, he says, anyway, I've said what I need to say, I do think, in a strange way that I have been gifted as a writer to have arrived in a time when the ways of the old South, the good and the bad, were a living memory, and that the people of that era were not historical abstractions to me, but souls made of flesh and blood. Today, it would be impossible for uh, young white men to have a relationship with Oliver McNabb, an old black farmhand we called Preacher, who was the cook at my father's hunting camp. Preacher, so-called because he used to stand on the yard at Angola State Penitentiary and preach the gospel as he understood it, had done time in prison for killing his wife's lover. He was dear to me in my childhood. He loved all us kids, children of the hunters. He made jelly cakes for us on our birthday. Truth to tell, I would have preferred to have stayed in the hunting camp kitchen on the bluff high above the Mississippi on those cold winter mornings rather than go into the swamp in search of deer. I like drinking paper cups full of hot, sweet coffee with the gas heater burning brightly, listening to that old black man tell his stories. I was innocent back then of the social order and what it had done to preacher and men like him. I just knew that I loved him and he loved me. He called me for some strange reason, Clyde. <laughs> He had funny names for all his kids. That's not a funny name. He just didn't know what your name was. You made that little of an impression on him, Rod. This man that is, you loved more than your own dad. He kept calling you Clyde, not because it was a nickname. He thought it was your name. I Okay, up until the Clyde detail, I thought that Rod had completely hallucinated <laughs> a Green Mile type event in his childhood. This is a beautiful mind. This is like Paul Bettany yeah. in a beautiful mind. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and I, I like that he was like, I was ignorant of the social order back in that day. I just simply took it for granted that the uh, the felon who was the was the, the the cook for my dad's hunting camp was embedded in any kind of social order in the South. Uh, yeah, going on here, it says, I wonder this morning if Preacher knew that my father, with whom he was friendly, had been in the Klan not 10 years earlier. If he did, how did that affect the way he saw my dad? Did he know of other white men at the camp who had been Klansmen? I'll never know. Not this side of heaven. I do believe that, as sentimental as it sounds, Preacher has spent his time in heaven praying for them. That's who he was, a convicted murderer, a believer in Jesus, and a teller of delightful tales to white children he plied with jelly cakes on their birthdays. Lot go, lot, lot, once again with Rod, I, just, I appreciate the psychology he's, he renders in all of his, all of his articles. Um, he doesn't have to see a therapist. He has thousands of view, readers who get to do like <laughs> yeah. massive online role playing therapy of him. I mean, In every article he writes, it's just like, okay, what's going on with Rod here? You also don't really need therapy if Bagger Vance is in heaven playing <laughs> for you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, he says here, uh, go, j jumping ahead now, he says, I confronted my father with this knowledge. He had the, uh, the he's talking, of course, about the fact that, um, uh, that he wrote a whole book about the death of his eldest sister called like the little way of Ruthie Lemming or something like that. We've made fun of it in the past. We've, we've made fun of all the dead people in his family for a while now, but no, it's about, it's about how he like moved his family back to like the parish he grew up in, in Louisiana. And that like he was expecting he, cause he wanted to embed himself in a life of tradition connected to like, you know, uh, faith and family and like, you know, like the, 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 the soil that he had sprung from. And of course they all treated him like shit. And he's talking about how, um, like his, it, like his dad had just like poisoned the well for like his sister and her kids for Rod and his family. So he says here, I confronted my father with this knowledge. He had the power to change the narrative, but he wouldn't do it to do. So would, uh, would be to admit that he had once been wrong and that that was something he could not do. He told me in a separate argument that the Lemming girls, his niece's family, were right to reject us because y'all are so damn weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Uh, oh, God. What can you say? <laughs> I do not... Well, obviously, we do not agree with um, most of what this man did in his life, whether it is being a member of the Klan or um, siring Rod, but... <laughs> When he's right, he's right. He definitely he yep. got that right. He picked him on that one. Yeah. He's just, he's, Rod and his ways, are, they're, they're citified. They're not countrified. They're citified. And he says, I fell chronically ill with mononucleosis for four years because of the stress over all this. Four just, years? Four years. Four Rod years of mono, mono from his parents years. treating him like shit. That's just, god damn. Rod, that is, 
he has all the sympathetic ailments of a Victorian dowager. It's great. <laughs> it's so good. How he doesn't have long COVID or long vaccine hangover or whatever. I mean, just pick your poison rod. But I mean, just why? <laughs> Why you're tired all the time? I think he's uh, just gonna he's skipping all that shit, and I think he's gonna end up with stigmata pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it, yeah, he's doing the right wing version of like those people on Tumblr you would see, where it's like huge day. I finally, you know, I found a doctor who believes me about my always tired syndrome. <laughs> He, there's got to uh, be he, there's got to be a viral explanation for why I'm tired and sad all of the time. Has anyone ever had mono for more than a year I, or even <laughs> six months? I like, didn't know that it could hold not, on that long. I thought it no. was the, the, the kissing disease. Rod, you, you cheeky devil. <laughs> <laughs> no, he says he, got, he had mono for four years because of the stress of all of this. Okay. Eventually, I recovered. Thank God. Sure I talk about this. I talk about if you this want in to my, call it that. <laughs> I talk about this in my Dante book. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Midway through life, I found myself with mono in a dark swamp in Louisiana. <laughs> That's what, that's what people who bought the Dante book wanted to hear about. But he goes, and, uh, and the key moment of my recovery was realizing that without knowing what I was doing, I had made an idol of family and place, and in particular of my father, who was the embodiment of this. I took it all to confession and repented of having placed my earthly father in the place of God, the father in my mind. After that, I began to slowly heal and was able to present, uh, able to be present when my dad, a few months before he died, apologized to me for the way he had treated me. He passed from this world with peace between us, a great gift from God. Uh, I like he says that, like, I, I repented for placing my earthly father in the place of God the father in my mind. Yeah, like, what a, what a weird thing to do to identify with your dad rather than the, the deity that you focus your religion's life around. Like I said, everyone needs a dad. Everyone needs a dad. Everyone needs find a dad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but okay, here is uh, this is a, okay. This is where Rod again after after going to great lengths to stress and like relay the, the the deep deep divisions that existed culturally, socially, and personally between him and his former clansman father. Rod still can't help himself because he includes this paragraph. But they didn't have to, because the ambient culture, while post-segregationist, meant that one absorbed these values unconsciously. Plus, black people and white people were really very different in terms of culture. What a shock it was to me to go to a rare evening assembly at school when I was 13, and uh, was then moved to the same building as high schoolers, and to see girls only a year or two older than me, whom I would see daily in the hallways at school, carrying their babies while their mothers doted on them. That was, this was how local black culture was. It was also very, very strange to me as a kid to learn from black classmates in elementary schools that they had no fathers in the home. I eventually began to wonder to what extent the white taboos against race mixing was merely out of pure race hatred and to what extent it was a form of protection against the sexual code that was destroying the black family. So congratulations, Rod. Uh, any, 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 any iota of sympathy I had for you in your horrible childhood has now just been completely obliterated. You never miss. He never f fails to uh, reveal his bone-deep sexual repression and terror. I mean, I think there's something to that. I mean, I think there's something to this, like the, the idea of like to how much race and sex and like sexual pathology is like you know is married in the minds of people like Rod and like what they hate and fear about black people is like you know is is just another extension of their own weird like sexual horrors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, I've definitely heard that. I have heard that. Um, from academics who have um, much less baggage, let's say, than Rod. You heard from DJ that, academics? <laughs> you heard from DJ academics, yeah. <laughs> that, um, you know, a lot of um, anti-black racism in America is rooted in this, like, on the part of, of white people, like a pathological, psychotic fear and fascination sexually. And like, yeah, this like a, the fear a base, that their kids will become promiscuous or something, but they, yeah, a, 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 yeah, a base fear of like cuckoldry, whether spiritual or literal, you know. Uh, and then, okay, now we get to the, the crowning achievement of of this Rod article. This is this is this is this is top tier Rod. We're finally getting to here. If you didn't think that was weird enough, he writes, "There's something eerie here too." Just last week, mm. in conversation with an Orthodox priest back in America. 
a cleric who is also an exorcist. Okay, so we're back. We're back in exorcism, baby. We're back. Rod is back. I mean, like the idea that Rod could go even one week without consulting with an exorcist is frankly ludicrous to me. So I'm glad that um, he's in da- in daily communication with exorcists of all religious uh, religious tendencies, Orthodox, Catholic, whatever. Um, he says here, uh, a cleric who is also an exorcist. The priest told me how he had discovered in his exorcism work how wicked Freemasonry is. He has seen people become possessed through it. I told him about my Catholic friend in New York whose grandfather was a high-level Freemason in Italy and who had become possessed through the curse he brought onto the family, which destroyed her father and his generation within the family and wreaked havoc on hers. I would love to know more of that story. But he says, in this uh, conversation, I mentioned to the exorcist my belief that my late father, a 32nd degree Mason, had been involved with the Klan in the 60s and how I suspected that had a lot to do with his prior involvement with Freemasonry. The exorcist told me that I must pray for my father's soul every day for the rest of my life. I agreed to do this. And now we find proof that my suspicions are accurate. Lord have mercy. I don't know what else to say. So there you go. Rod's father, a member of the KKK, do, but much, much more serious than being in the Klan, a 32nd degree Freemason, which is way more evil than being in the Klan in Louisiana in the 60s. Well, only one like, of those was responsible for the French Revolution. <laughs> yeah, but like in the 60s, what are Freemasons in Louisiana doing? Like dr- fucking driving around little uh, gag toy cars? Oh, wait, no, those are the Shriners. The, yeah, I just, the Shriners. They're, they're actually... <laughs> The Shriners are a section of Freemasons. They come, they're butted Demons. off of Freemasons. Yes. Demons. They're like a charitable arm of Freemasonry. Yeah, they're like the fruit of Islam to the nation of Islam. <laughs> yes. Um, how does he account for like the Freemasons who weren't in the Klan, which was a lot of them? <laughs> I mean, um, it, well, I, if I'm not mistaken, the Klan, the, the resurgent Klan that came out uh, around right after Birth of a Nation one of its goals was like against Freemasonry. Yeah, they were. If I'm remembering right, Freemasonry and Catholicism. Yeah, I. What Louisiana, Louisiana is obviously <laughs> weird, though. I mean, because like, yeah, there most of the clans have, were Catholics Catholic. there. Yeah. yeah. Did you see that? It reminds, like, uh, me, it reminds me of this thing that somebody told me uh, about French Alcoholics Anonymous about how they have wine at the meetings. <laughs> Yes, you can have like a little bit of Freemasonry and Catholicism at the uh, Louisiana clan. Yeah, you know, we, we do things a bit different down here. <laughs> uh, good, good, good. Uh, 33 degree Freemason me and make the jackrabbit and slap the bear. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's some good Freemasonry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no. That reminds me of that. Like, uh, it was one of those like trad posts people were making fun of. It was some girl who was just like, in a lot of ways, uh, Southerners make the perfect Catholics. And then, unfortunately, there was a lot of people from the South and the replies just being like, "Yeah, my family thinks uh, Catholics are uh, pagan demons that aren't Christian. It's good yeah. stuff." Yeah, but they love well, tradition. Is yeah. the Politics. ultimate is the ultimate conclusion here that Rod's dad is in hell, though? Yeah. Is he just sort of like... That's why, that's why the exorcist this, told yeah. him he has to pray for his soul every day of his life. But, you know, oh, but the man. good news that is, is that, that they'll a... be reunited. Because that's where Rod's going, yeah. for sure. <laughs> that is a pickle for Rod's dad. If he's just been in hell all this time, and it's like, oh, we got bad news for you, Mr. Dreyer. <laughs> Only one person can get you out of this. <laughs> it's your fruitcake, bouillabaisse cooking son. <laughs> he has to pray. He has to. He has to get a. Pr- him and his dumbass readers who send him fake stories have to make a prayer bomb like Goku that's big enough to create a path, a, a, a tunnel out of hell for you. And he's like, "Oh, damn it! Couldn't be anyone else. It's Rod. Rod's the one who's going to pray me out of hell. I knew I shouldn't have gotten involved in that Freemasonry." <laughs> So yeah, uh, listeners, if you have any, if you have any family members who are in, involved in Freemasonry, please intervene now before it's too late. <laughs> I just, I just love, I just, I just love for Rod, like the Freemasons are the demonic feature of his dad's life, and not literally being in the Ku Klux Klan. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was like, he was only in the Klan because of the Masons. All right. <laughs> yeah. It's like, like yeah, he. The, the 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 gravity he assigns the part about the clan versus the gravity of the thing about the Freemasons is just it's it's like 
He talks about him being in the clan like he found out his dad frequented strip clubs. <laughs> and he talks the Freemasons thing, it's like he discovered his dad was a concentration camp guard. Yeah. <laughs> no, like he says he says that like, oh, me, me and my father ended with peace between us and it's been a great gift from God. And then by the end he's like, I consulted my exorcist friend and I've been basically praying for my dad not to be tortured every day for eternity because of his uh, masonry. What's so wicked about the Freemasons again? Yeah, that they're anti-Catholic church, that they over they did the French Revolution. They're, you know, yeah, this they, is, they're this is hell they're, on earth territory. They were they do they did modernity. Okay, they, they got together in their little cliques with their little aprons, and they tried to turn man into God instead of <clears throat> uh, worshiping God as they should. It's so funny because it's like it's like assigning like globalism to the Kiwanis Club. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I, it wouldn't be a Rod story if it didn't involve a mage. <laughs> I just love like Rod is wondering, what is that that old black cook who I loved more than my own family and how I wished I could stay preparing meals with him when my dad and brothers are out hunting? <laughs> I wish I could <laughs> be setting the table with him. I mean, I wonder, God, God, I wonder what Preacher would think if he knew that my dad was a Freemason. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so there you go. That's um, that was the the major rod news that transpired in the uh, <laughs> the Christmas to New Year is doldrums, finally. But man, it just he he keeps coming out with he just 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 it's just like a kaleidoscope. Every time you turn it, his life reveals some new <laughs> hilarious facet that has produced a man that we know and love, Rod Dreher. And he is now going to continue finding himself in the plains of uh, of Hungary. Well, hopefully um, none of our listeners found out that any of their grandparents or dads or, mu- or well, they don't let women in the Freemasons, so that's, that's, you don't have to worry about that. No Freemason family members. Hopefully none of you discovered those over the holidays or the new year. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's a good chance your mom or aunt could be in an equally demonic organization, the, the female Freemasons, uh, Daughters of the American Revolution, <laughs> <laughs> or who have been club. doing human sacrifice since 1776. <laughs> yeah, well... I I always wonder like how Rod's story is going to end. Like I kind of give it like decent odds that he ends up like I don't know, a member of BJP. <laughs> I could see him honestly doing that. Yeah. It like kind of makes sense. All that all that know. post 9/11 rage coming back to the surface <laughs> like, "Oh right, Muslims." <laughs> What about, you know, as we've speculated about many other religious fanatics in this country, what about just the light of Islam? Submission. Is that, I think I don't know. You know what? The Islam's a little too butch for Rod. Yeah, that's a the thing. He needs more too macho, a little too it guy needs more, heavy. Yeah. It needs to be more fabulous. <laughs> well, like I don't. I'm. Everyone always like you know speculates on right wing reactionary like quasi religious figures shifting over to Islam, and it's like I don't really buy it because Islam is too like joyous for them. You know, like the average Muslim just seems like. I don't know. A little too much joie de vivre for someone like Rod. I guess he could be like a hardcore Salafist, but even that, that's like a lot of work. It's probably too hard. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't be, you can't be eating pork knuckle and hungry, looking with sweaty Magyar men if you're, you know, get, get really into <laughs> yeah. Islam. All the delicious treats he loves to prepare and sup upon. Like, you know, is, uh, are, is shellfish forbidden in the in, uh, Islamic dietary law? Like actually, it is in Judaism? I actually don't think so. Okay, so maybe you can have oysters. We'll see. I don't know. I'm not sure, though, yeah. Hey, you know what? Know who has no dietary restrictions? Freemasons. It's Eat true. Want, yeah, buffet is always it. open. <laughs> All well, you can I, eat. I mean, that's how you know they're up to no good. 